Hi, I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, Chairman of the Board of the International Association of Pageantry. And with me today is Tina Chisholm, who is a co-founder of the IAOP. And so we wanted to just come to, uh, to you for a few moments and help answer one of the biggest questions that pageant contestants have. And that is, how do I know which pageant I should enter? There are thousands of pageant systems around the world. Uh, and so the question, it really becomes daunting. How do I choose the right pageant for me? And of mm -hmm. course, uh, you have counseled uh, many a girl over your, your years as a director and, and uh, hosting and so forth on how to choose the right pageant. So uh, what are some of the tips and tidbits that they should keep in mind when they're choosing the right pageant? Okay, it is a daunting task, especially if you're new to the world of pageantry. Um, I think you have to do your homework. Um, you really have to sit down, if you're a mom and it's a younger contestant, figure out what her strengths are and what she's interested in. If it is um, an older young lady, same thing really applies, but she can do a lot of that research on her own. Um, because there are so many pageants, there is something for everyone, but you really have to look. Okay, so is it different for younger girls versus older girls? Do some um, systems cater more towards a certain age groups? Um, yes. When you get to um, Miss USA, mm -hmm. Miss America, um, they really are teen and Miss driven. So they really do um, figure everything toward that older young lady. Um, there are lots of pageant systems that cater to eight or nine different age groups. So you might start as a baby mm -hmm. and go all the way to infinity, <laughs> which a lot of pageants do. Um, but they also offer different things. So it's not just you have, you know, thousands of pageants. What do you choose from? I think you have to find for yourself what are your interests. If you're a young lady who is in um, theater, Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I'm also the mom of a pageant, young right. lady. Um, and, you know, Becca has won her share of local, state, and national. Um, she's theater. She's dance. She's singing. Well, there are pageants who are talent-driven. Um, Miss America is talent-driven. Um, so that is where someone with the ability and a God-given talent can compete. And if the majority of that score is talent, then they're really in a good position going in. If talent isn't something, you know, that you're versed mm -hmm. in, there are tons of pageants that are interview, um, swimsuit, or fitness wear. Some pageants do fitness wear if you're teen and younger. Some pageants do swimwear. That's usually, I would say, teen and above. Okay. So, you know, again, some pageants don't have any of that type of competition involved, and that may not be something you're comfortable with. And that really is a conversation for a parent and a child. What are you comfortable with? What are you not comfortable with? If you're looking to compete as you get older, you are going to be in a position where you're going to have to do swimsuit. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we have trainers, nutritional plans, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards, and we're all kind of used to that. Um, there are fitness-driven pageants where there literally is a fitness routine. They have a trainer on site. And that trainer really has come up with a list of physical fitness uh, exercises mm -hmm. that he expects you to do. And you just do them to the best of your ability. Um, not every pageant has interview. Uh, most pageants have a sit-down interview with a panel of anywhere from three to five judges. Some pageants are facial beauty. So it's mm -hmm. judged on, you know, literally how beautiful the young lady is mm -hmm. so you really have to do your homework some pageants will have fun fitness and that is a separate category which may or may not uh, count toward the actual title it might be an optional but you really have to do your homework because when you show up you really need to have that wardrobe in place complete with accessories know exactly what's expected of you and have run through it and practiced at home um, I would never recommend showing up to a pageant cold right. and running it through. Um, I always get concerned if a pageant says no experience necessary. Honestly, there are pageants that you literally can show up, and it can be your first time on the stage with no coaching, very little prep, and you'll do well. Um, in, a, in an established system, um, again, I'll, I'll probably go back to America and USA, um, those systems... Those competitors have been in play for quite some time. Right. Um, I think it's very unusual for it to be your first pageant. I do know young ladies that have won first time out of the shoot. Um, just not everybody's able to do that. 
Right. So I think it goes back to you really need to do your homework. Okay. So let's let's dive into that. So much information there. <clears throat> All right. So take uh, wardrobe, for example. You breeze okay. through that. But uh, and I, when I'm saying wardrobe, I mean the evening gown, the swimsuit, the fitness wear, uh, opening number, all of the different, you know, the whole wardrobe for a competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that vary among systems? Uh, rather, one system is more conservative, one's more sexy, one's more athletic, one's, you know, the different vibes, hair up, hair down, you know, all of those different things that go into wardrobe, somewhat over the top or glam. Uh, so, so walk yeah. us through the differences just on wardrobe. Uh, just on wardrobe. Um, okay. Again, let's go to USA. Okay. Um, I think it is very body driven. Okay. Um, and as a matter of fact, Megan Clemente, who sits on the IOP board, yes, is Miss Florida 2010. Yes, loved her since she was young. Um, it is very. Um, what do I want to say? Pleasing to the eye. Okay. Um, they are very into the full package and what you look like. And literally, you start at your head and you stop at your feet. <laughs> um, so you're going to be on that stage in swimwear. Um, and I think, you know, depending upon how you want to present yourself will depend on, um, how much work you put into having an athletic body to some young ladies that is not important. They're more interested in the interview. Um, so I think you have to make a personal decision about how you want to look and how you want to compete in a system. Okay. So let me ask it this way. Let's say that, so, so someone really has to choose, uh, if there are certain systems that are more focused on the the physical image and beauty aspect, then they probably th- they need to make sure they're committed to being in shape or you know things along those lines. Uh, and if that's not what's important to them, then they need to find a pageant system that is more either talent driven if they have a unique talent or uh, that is I- interview and communication exactly. driven. Right? Exactly. And well, and let me preface this with this is just my opinion, right? You know, because well, everybody. But yours is a very good and valid opinion for but, many people. But everybody is is going to be a little bit different. You know, we we live in this age where um, we are not going to body shame young ladies. Yeah. You know. Um, but also, what I don't want is I don't. Th- this is not for the established pageant person. Right. This is to me the is newbies. for somebody. Yeah. They're, the they're just saying, where do we even start? And we've seen several come even yes. to, to uh, Rebecca and so forth saying, uh, you know, for coaching or whatever, I'm lost. Because yes. it's so, the moment you start, you can get quickly overwhelmed with what system do I choose? The the yes. cost of entry is even a factor into which Absolutely. one I can participate in. And, and pageants can go from, depending upon what you're looking for, $50 an entry fee to almost 900 yeah. So it really depends. Now, I would encourage you, if you're going to spend 800 700 what's the prize package? You know, because I think if you're going to enter a package, if you're going to enter a pageant and pay that kind of money, you know, what perceived value do you have going in? Mm-hmm. Um, but let me go back to the other. Um, I have very definite ideas of what I think certain systems are looking for. I do think the USA system is very body driven. I also think they expect you to be um, very bright. You have interview. Um, A lot of the girls who interview have platforms. Um, You know, they have started their own nonprofit, their own charity, um, or they're affiliated with one and have been for a long time. So that when they go into interview, it really isn't just that resume. And I will tell you, some of these young ladies are stellar. Mm. Um, You know, I had a title holder that graduated from the University of Florida and she was uh, magna cum laude um, brilliant and beautiful and lovely on the inside um, so I, I think you know they don't expect brains and beauty in the same package <laughs> and it's wonderful you know because that really yeah. is truly what it is um, so I think you have to decide if you have a talent and that is what you love to do then you know Miss America is it and it is a scholarship pageant so literally I know young ladies who put themselves through college winning pageants and winning prize packages that were really Mm -hmm. cash-driven. So it depends on what your goal is. If you're entering a pageant and you really just want to win, you want the title, um, a lot of young ladies want to do that because you do have a platform. You do have a volunteer service that is dear to your heart. And that crown gives you an opportunity 
to have more of a stage right. in multiple places. So everybody comes, I think, into pageantry for different reasons. Um, you know, there are systems, we talked about face, facial beauty. That really is no interview. You walk in, you say your name sometimes, you, you know, maybe where you're from, um, <laughs> and you're judged on this. <laughs> um, then there are the actual, um, and you'll find probably that the pageants, um, the upper tier pageants, as I would call them, um, really expect you to go in and sit down. You'll have three to five judges. Um, you're probably going to prepare something in advance, and they will have that so that they have the opportunity to study you, know mm -hmm. your background, and can ask you questions. Um, and that's what I call the serious interview. Um, and you'll always know how a young lady does when she walks out of the room. You know, <laughs> seen it a thousand times. Um, you know, and if interview is the category of that system, that scores the highest, mm -hmm. then you have to nail the interview in order to, you know, make your top 10 and from 10, your top five, depending upon how they do it. Um, and if it really is question driven, then, and you, we see it at Miss Universe, you know, you get the question, no time to really think about it. So let's see what you can come up with that right. fast. And these girls are brilliant. I mean, right. we see it every year. All right. So what I've gathered then is there's, there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. that go into deciding what the right pageant is for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to look at why are you do, wanting to enter a pageant in the first place? Mm -hmm. uh, because if it's for financial reasons, uh, then that's going to significantly narrow down your options. Yes. Uh, also, I think geography plays a big part. It Which does. ones are within you know a driving radius of you? Um, what wardrobe are you comfortable wearing? Do you are you you know wanting to do uh, focus on fitness and, and kind of the, uh, the the healthy nature of, of, of a body and or you know with through swimsuit or are you wanting to steer more away from that? Uh, that'll really narrow down the field for you as well. Um, and then also the pri what the price package is. You know, if, is there a scholarship? Uh, is is there a vehicle or you know what, whatever right. it may contain? But examining the price package, um, if that's uh, or if you're just looking for the title, uh, community service is one that you touched Absolutely. on. Um, uh, some have a higher expectation, and we haven't even talked about that. So you won the pageant. Now what? You know, and 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 your philosophy is that's when the real work begins. It does. Right? You know, I've always told my girls: you ask for the job, you got the job. You know, there were probably 40, 50 girls standing behind you that wanted the job, but you know, you got it. So now do the job, and that really means you represent. Um, and once you've won a pageant, there's a contract, uh, and it's a legal binding document. Um, usually, the director will already have it pre-prepared. Um, you'll either, ha either have a meeting that night or, you know, the day after. Um, and not every pageant requires that. There are lots of pageants that don't. But that usually results in their requirement of you for a year uh, may be minimal. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they don't expect appearances. Maybe they don't expect you to help recruit. Um, and then you literally um, can come back the next year, crown your successor, and really you are done. Mm -hmm. um, there are pageants. Um, that you do win and they will expect you to go out and represent. Um, and that should be laid out in your contract as should the prize package. Um, and it will tell you what's expected of you. You know, how many appearances a month, uh, is your director going to secure appearances for you? And she expects you to do those in addition to what you can secure on your own. So that really, and for me, volunteer service is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I want someone who is beautiful on the inside. Because if you're beautiful on the inside, you will be beautiful on the outside. It does not always work the same in reverse. Right. Um, and I really always looked for a young lady with a heart for service, whether it was um, a volunteer organization she started on her own, and there are many of those, mm -hmm. um, or whether she volunteers for someone. As long as she is out there trying to leave the world a better place than she found it, that was really all I was interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me personally, that was a huge deal. Right, right. Okay, so community service, obviously a big aspect, but then also the contract, uh, the organization that you're you're uh, going to compete in, have an idea of what is going to be expected for you for the next year of your life uh, if you do win, and in fact win. So uh, that that's I think that's critical because mm -hmm. it's not just one and done. I mean, there's in many systems, especially the most respected ones. There are expectations of, uh, of, of appearances Absolutely. and work, and, and it's not based on what you feel like that day. It's you, you get it done. 
<laughs> well, and I always personally had a meeting, usually with the young lady that had won, and parents, you know, especially if you were teen and younger. Because mm-hmm. if you're 18 and younger, I want your signature so you understood what I was asking. But I also needed a parent's signature so it was legal. Um, and that's important, I think. A title holder needs to know what they're expected to do. Um, and I needed to know that that they understood it. But they have a right to know what to expect from me, too. Right. Um, you know, and, and that comes from directors in the form of a prize package. Um, and some pageants don't have prize packages or... You know, their prize package might be your sash, your crown, and your flower. And trust me, those things aren't inexpensive. So that's significant in and of itself. Right. Um, you know, we keep talking American USA, and I think those that's because those are the two that most people can recall immediately. Right. So it's easier kind of to go there. Um, but if a director promises you something, then and you fulfilled your obligation. I'm not talking about, gee, halfway through the year you just decided you had something better to do. You fulfilled your obligations then that director should fulfill their obligation as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether it was cash, a car, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, they need to fulfill their obligation. It is a two-way street, you know, and and it's always one of those, you know, I will respect you, but you need to respect me too. And um, I I just didn't have issues with that, Mm -hmm. you know, but I do think any person that's new to pageantry needs to understand it is serious. You did ask for the job. You got the job, so you need to do the job. Mm -hmm. And I, quite honestly, needed my girls to help me recruit. And I was always blessed with the best of the best. And, um, you know, we would crisscross the state, um, literally, from here to Miami and back in a night, um, you know, supporting another director, as a matter of fact, who supported me. And I think that's that's important, too. Um, You know, I had a lot of the girls go to other pageants. We went together. Because I think pageantry needs to support pageantry. Mm -hmm. It's not all about this one system. It truly is we all benefit if we all love each other, support each other, and support the girls. And quite honestly, there's only so many girls. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to support them on their journey. Um, You know, I've had young ladies come to me thinking they were going to enter my pageant. And just in conversation, no, they needed to go somewhere else because they had a talent and they were amazing. And my system didn't have a talent. Yeah. I remember well, once right, where you said that they were they came and they were saying all these things. And you're like, I know you and I would love to have you. But I think this other place would be better for you. Better well, suited. and I have always said it has to be about the young lady. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether you're a parent, whether you're a vendor, whether you're a director, when it's not about the young lady in front of you, mm-hmm. um, we get it wrong. We get it wrong. Um, it really is about helping them on their journey. What do they want to do? Where do they want to go? What's important to them? Um, Yes, broke my heart. I wanted this young lady so bad to compete that year. But um, the system I sent her to, Mm -hmm. um, she was about to age out. So if she did not go there that year, um, she could not have competed. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. Um, You go compete there. Right. And then come to me when you're done. And, and, And I hope you caught that bit of strategy right there. So that was a dynamic we haven't really talked about uh, in terms of when you're choosing what pageant. In that case, it was she, she would have been able to compete in that division for an extra year in in Tina's division and in, yeah. in, in system, but uh, she would have been aged out of a different mm-hmm. system. So sometimes it's the order in which you do pageants. It is. You really have to look at um, the age dynamic. Um, you know, some pageants you're going to age out, and I'm throwing this off the top of my head because I honestly don't know. Um, you know, you might age out at 27. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you have three pageants you want to compete in, um, I would go look at the age requirement. You need to look at residency. Some pageants require that you live in the, in the county you're competing in. Um, some people just require you live in the state. So, you know, I think you have to do, it goes back to research. You know, where do you live? What's your age? You know, what categories or what interests do you have? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can figure it out. But then I think you need to come up with, for, for lack of a better term, maybe a hit list mm-hmm. or a crown list, however <laughs> we want to yeah, word yeah. it, um, of where you need to go. But you need to look at that age out process. Mm-hmm. Um, because quite honestly, you know, without thinking about it, you can accidentally age out of the system. And that's not something you're going to fudge. I uh, don't think mm-hmm. you can just say something. Uh, the systems that I've seen, I've, I've seen where they have to bring 
actual copies of the birth certificate. And, uh, I collected uh, them. And, right. Mm-hmm. And this is state and national pageants. You're going to even local pageants, regional pageants, excuse me, that I've seen done. Uh, you've had to bring a, a proof of you know uh, birth in terms of a well, year. And a lot of your directors are responsible for that. You know, mm-hmm. if you won my state title and I was taking you to nationals, I had to make sure that you were correct and I was correct. Including residency, proof of residency, Absolutely. utility bills, you know, something. Yep. I had to be able to prove to my national director that I had brought a contestant that was eligible to compete in her division. Mm -hmm. So you need to really look at that list of rules, you know, Um, and I quite honestly didn't tolerate anyone trying to find that gray line Mm -hmm. because there's too many young ladies um, trying to compete. And I think, um, you know, again, it goes back to you can hold me to a high standard, but I'm going to hold you to a high standard, Mm -hmm. too. Um, And I just think if it goes back to the focus and the attention has to be on what is best for that young lady, um, then everybody will do the right thing. Well, I can't let you go without talking about that specifically because uh, it's one of the reasons that the uh, International Association of Pageantry was founded uh, based on the integrity uh, that you just mentioned and, of course, making it about all about supporting the girls. So, um, you know, the the IAOP, I, I want you to share kind of your heart about it because it is a way for contestants, vendors, suppliers, parents, Mm -hmm. supporters, uh, systems themselves to really uh, come together uh, and operate by a uh, a baseline ethical standard, you know, and really these are basic human uh, dignities and values that we should have, uh, but but share kind of uh, how that was birthed. Yeah, I just call it basic human decency. Yes. You know, Um, yeah, the IAOP is very important to me. um, because long before I was a director, I was the mom of a, a competitor. Um, and Becca started competing at nine. Um, and we've all seen pageants go right. Yeah, and we've yeah. all seen them go wrong. Um, and we never said anything. You know, uh, uh, I know how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. So that's I'm responsible right. for my house. Right. And that's how we conducted ourselves. The flip side of that coin is, you know, um, pageantry is a huge industry. And really, there was no regulatory body in place, Um, not that we should have to have one for integrity Mm -hmm. and ethics, but most all industries do. Yes. So um, really, it it came about because we were talking, you know, in the living room one night. Um, But that is near and dear to my heart. Um, But it it holds true for both the contestant and the director. Um, I think you do what you know is right. Um, but we do know there are contestants who, who win and win uh, a major system with a large prize package, maybe doesn't fulfill her obligations, and then that director's like, well, gee, um, same token, you have a young lady who fulfills her obligations, goes to collect a prize package, and doesn't get it all. You know, I understand that times get rough and sometimes plans change, but if it's in writing, you have a legal obligation to fulfill your contract. Um, we are not a legal entity, but as long as there is a written contract in place that can come to us if, if they have an issue, and we are happy to try and mediate it. Um, but I would hope that everyone would want to be a member. Um, it literally is free this year mm-hmm. to become a member of the IOC. For the contestants. Yeah. Yes, yes. IOP. Um, it literally is one of those, just be a member. Um, you know, it will... Uh, put you in a position where if you read um, the website, it kind of tells you what you have a right to and you don't, Mm -hmm. you know, have a right to. Um, And I don't think every contestant knows that. I would hope every director does Mm because the director should be older than the contestant, I would think, in most instances. Um, But it does give us a foundation for here's what is right, here's what is just decent. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do think it is needed. Um, Our feedback is great. Yes. Um, from other directors and contestants, uh, we have young ladies signing up all the time. Yes. Um, so I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, I think it's something that's needed. I think because the industry is an older industry, I do think it may take us a while to get to the point where our numbers are through the roof. Uh, my goal eventually would be you want to enter a pageant. Well, gee, are they a member of the IOP? Mm, right. Um because we stand for something. Right. And, and also, uh, from the system side, I would want to know if the contestant is a member of the IAOP. Absolutely. Because I want to know if they are go- if they have been willing to sign up and say, I will compete ethically. Yes. Because we've seen it where 
Yes. Sometimes the girls are not. Uh, it is it is a double edged sword. It goes both ways. Yes. Um, you know, again, I think it goes back to I used to say to my girls, I have a right. You have a right to know what I expect from you, mm-hmm. but you have a right to know what you can expect from me. Um, I won't breach mine mm-hmm. and you don't breach yours. I never, you know, had issues. I, I was blessed. Um, But that was the reason for the IOP. It's been said that uh, discipline will either be imposed uh, from within or from without. Meaning if you don't self-discipline, then, you know, for example, the law, (laughs) right, can Mm -hmm. correct you if you Mm -hmm. aren't uh, self-disciplined in certain areas. And so the same thing goes for true is is true with uh, every industry that I know of. uh, They have regulatory bodies or they have industry associations that help try to self-govern self-regulate so that laws don't have to be created that uh, uh, cause undue hardship or, or, yeah. or challenges on an industry. And the reason so ma- there is so much red tape for many industries out there is because of bad actors along the way. We've seen bad actors in pageantry like there are in every industry. And I think what, you know, what the IAOP, one of the objectives is to say, hey, let's let's start self-governing and self uh, you know, directing, regulating ourselves uh, to prevent, you know, laws that don't make sense uh, yes. and, that, and that cause that, that aren't in the girl's best interest uh, or in, in entrepreneur and, and directors and, and system owners, you know, best interest as well. We really believe that, that the, it's the combination of these that, uh, that that's going to allow the IAOP to just flourish uh, all over the world. When I was in Rwanda, obviously sharing about the IAOP and there's just the pageantry is such a global business uh, that we just want to make sure that uh, there is an established uh, ethical and values baseline. And so we would love to have you uh, as part, uh, join us and as part of the team. Uh, you can go to pageantryassociation.com uh, to see what uh, you know how how you can become a member there. So uh, Tina, thank you again for joining us thank today you for and for us. the amazing tips. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.